Didn't these meals used to have a cobbler? Uh, they discontinued the cobbler. You never see it coming. One day, your favorite food items are stocked on grocery store shelves. The next, they're nowhere to be found. So let's journey back to the grocery stores of yore and take a look at the top 10 discontinued food items we miss, part six. Kellogg's Danish Rings. Dare I say, a Danish? In 1976, Kellogg's introduced Danish rings as a replacement for their Danish go-rounds, a fruit-filled pastry which, since its release in 1968, had made for a popular snack. Danish rings were an upgrade, as they were much flakier, giving them a more enjoyable texture and making them far less messy to eat. What? Other than that, they were quite similar to Danish go-rounds, although they were stamped in an oval shape. This famous oval shape made them reminiscent of the Danish breakfast pastry, hence the name, and they were marketed as a great way to kick off your day. However, poor Danish rings never had much of a shot. There was another Kellogg's fruit-filled pastry in town. They're called Pop-Tarts. You may have heard of them. For whatever reason, the vast majority of consumers seem to prefer Pop-Tarts to Danish rings. As a result, Danish rings were discontinued in 1980. Pop-Tarts Frosted Chocolate Vanilla Cream Why would a Pop-Tart want to live inside a toaster, Rick? While Pop-Tarts as a whole have made it out alive, some of their flavors didn't do so well. One of them was Frosted Chocolate Vanilla Cream. This Pop-Tart variety was a decadent treat, but one that was acceptable to eat for breakfast, because that's what Pop-Tarts are for, right? Lois, can I have a Pop-Tart in bed, please? The chocolate pastry was filled with vanilla cream and frosted with vanilla icing topped with a chocolate crumble. After being discontinued in 2009, Kellogg's teased us with a comeback, reintroducing the flavor in 2014 as part of the celebration of Pop-Tart's 50th anniversary, during which they also brought back their discontinued vanilla milkshake flavor. This special re-release was, however, quite short-lived, and frosted chocolate vanilla cream Pop-Tarts were gone as quickly as they had reappeared. Anyone who was a fan of frosted chocolate vanilla cream Pop-Tarts Pop-Tarts back in the day can attest to the fact that this flavor is good enough to merit a comeback, please and thank you. Nestle Alpine White Chocolate you There's a serious shortage of white chocolate bars. Occasionally, you can find white chocolate versions of Kit Kats and Aero bars, and of course, there's Hershey's famous cookies and cream chocolate bar, but all in all, white chocolate candy bars are rare. That's why we can't afford to be discontinuing all the good ones. Everything about this chocolate bar was fantastic, right up to the advertisements. Although, those were made great by the fact that they were so terrible. They get increasingly bizarre as time goes by. But back to the candy itself. Nestle Alpine White Chocolate was made even better by the fact that it contained almonds. They added a pleasant crunch and a little saltiness that really enhanced the overall flavor of the candy bar. It was released in 1986 and discontinued in 1993, to the disappointment of many a chocolate lover. Nestle claims this was due to lack of sales. On the topic of a re-release, one employee allegedly pointed out to an inquiring client that the bar had been discontinued for over two decades and told them to do the math. He makes a fair point. The Nestle Alpine white chocolate bar has been discontinued for so long that the odds of it returning seem quite slim. But unlike that Nestle employee, we like to be optimistic. Pudding Roll-Ups Pudding! Sometime during the 1980s, Betty Crocker decided that conventional pudding cups were too inconvenient for kids to be lugging around all day, which is a fair point. How many of us have opened our lunch bags only to be disappointed by the discovery of a crushed pudding cup? The solution to this issue, however, was more troubling than the problem itself. Betty Crocker decided to give pudding a whole new form and created something reminiscent of a fruit roll-up. Are those gummy bears wrapped in a fruit roll-up? These flattened pudding strips came in three three classic pudding flavors, milk chocolate, chocolate fudge, and butterscotch. Pudding roll-ups were marketed as pudding in disguise, which may have been a selling point back in the 80s, but today is mildly concerning. We've got to give it to this food item, though. Pudding roll-ups did make transporting pudding a lot easier. All kids had to do was shove a couple of individually wrapped puddings into their pocket and hit the road. As their own snack food, pudding roll-ups weren't all that bad. Actually, we kind of liked them. But trying to pass them off as pudding was just plain strange and didn't do anything to help the marketing. As a result, they only survived a couple of years before production was nixed. Doritos Black Pepper Jack 
Do you know anyone at Doritos? In the graveyard of long lost Doritos flavors, you can find Doritos Black Pepper Jack, one of the forgotten greats of the chip world. This Doritos flavor really went all in. The flavor is anything but subtle. It almost tastes like you dipped a Dorito in cheese. This is by no means a bad thing. Who doesn't love cheese? As for the black pepper, its flavor wasn't super pronounced, but it provided a nice kick at the end. It's got a bit of a kick. They came in silver bags, in which you could actually see your reflection. Supposedly, the purpose of that was so you could look at yourself in shame after finishing a whole bag by yourself. The ease at which you could eat a bag of these chips on your own is a testament to just how good they were. Luckily, some stores, particularly in Canada, will bring these back every once in a while, so keep your eyes open for them. You never know when or where Black Pepper Jack Doritos might make a reappearance, but when they do, you better be ready to stop. Stock up. Fruit shaped tricks. I've been led to understand that tricks are exclusively for children. This one might come off as a bit superficial, but hear us out. Trix cereal is still alive and well these days. The cereal is made of multicolored corn puffs, which originally were shaped like spheres. Each color represents a different flavor of cereal. The classic flavors include raspberry red, lemony lemon, orangey orange, wild berry blue, grapeity purple, and watermelon. That last one doesn't quite fit, but we appreciate the normalcy of it. The cereal is represented by its famous mascot the Trix Rabbit, who has been around since the 1950s. He's evolved over time, but at his core, he's still the same bunny we and our parents and grandparents before us know and love. He's most recognizable for his role in cereal commercials, where he tries to trick children into handing over their Trix cereal. This leads to the famous catchphrase, Silly Rabbit, Tricks are for kids. So why all this talk about Trix if the cereal is still being produced? Glad you asked. In 19 in 1991, the original Trix spheres were replaced with cereal pieces that were shaped like the fruit to which their flavor and color corresponded. Then in 2007, they decided to go back to the original circular pieces, which most people were familiar with. We said it was superficial, remember? Their new slash old, less exciting appearance took a lot of the fun out of eating Trix cereal, and for that reason, the fruit shapes were sorely missed. And that Trix rabbit must have heard the cries, because in late 2018, the fun fruit-shaped tricks made a return. So if you're missing the original little balls, judging by the back and forth between sphere shapes and fruit shapes, it's only a matter of time before they pull the old switcheroo once again. Hostess Chocodile These chocodiles, Francine, oh my god, these chocodiles, oh my god. The Hostess Chocodile was once the subject of a major debate. Is it or is it not a chocolate-covered Twinkie? That's a big Twinkie. We're all about asking the important questions here. This long-running debate was finally settled when Hostess confirmed on television that, yes, a Chocodile is in fact just that. The reason the answer wasn't clear was because the cake of a Chocodile and that of a Twinkie seemed to differ in texture. This, however, was actually due to the chocolate coating. The chocolate caused increased moisture levels, which ultimately made the cake of a Chocodile taste slightly different than that of a Twinkie. In the late 90s, Chocodiles stopped being sold on the East Coast of the United States. This was because only factories on the West Coast would be continuing to produce them, and they wanted to maintain the product's freshness. For a short time, Chocodiles could be purchased exclusively on the West Coast, but before long, they disappeared entirely. Oof. In recent years, Hostess seems to have released a dessert very similar to the Chocodile, under the name Fudge-Covered Twinkie, but even these are difficult to find. This rebrand also meant that the Chocodile mascot, a fun-loving crocodile named Chauncey, has been removed from the packaging. I think we can all agree that Chauncey deserved better. Black Cherry Vanilla Coke Mix them together, you get a cherry Coke. <laughs> it's starting to feel like the only Coke flavor that has the power to stand the test of time is the original one. Honestly, if Coca-Cola will go as far as to stop producing black cherry vanilla Coke, there's nothing they won't discontinue. In 2006, Coca-Cola simultaneously introduced black cherry vanilla Coke and began to phase out vanilla Coke. It seems as though the logic was that the black cherry vanilla would replace the vanilla flavor, as well as appeal to fans of cherry Coke, which in the same year 
was freshly dubbed Coca-Cola Cherry. Sound logic. I know. Unfortunately, things didn't seem to go as planned. Vanilla Coke's audience was not satisfied with settling for Black Cherry Vanilla Coke, and their outcry was loud enough for Coca-Cola to resume production of the discontinued drink, this time under the name Coca-Cola Vanilla. By mid-2007, Black Cherry Vanilla Coke sales weren't impressing anyone, and Coca-Cola had no choice but to discontinue it. However, the fact that this soft drink wasn't selling well doesn't mean that it wasn't good. With less than two years on the market, it barely got a chance to make an impression. And yes, this is a heavy-handed hint that Coca-Cola should give this beverage another shot. Please, give me another chance! Although now we're kind of wondering what would happen if we tried mixing Coca-Cola Cherry and Coca-Cola Vanilla. Naturally, it wouldn't be identical to the Black Cherry Vanilla Coke we miss so much, but it would probably be better than nothing. Snapple Element Drinks Snapple? No thanks. Ringing in the end of the century, Snapple Element Drinks hit shelves in April of 1999. In keeping with the Element theme, the original four flavors were dubbed Earth, Sun, Fire, and Rain. Earth was Grape Cranberry, Sun was Starfruit Orange, Fire was Dragon Fruit, and Rain was Agave Cactus. Which sounds like a code for tequila, but let's not dwell on that. Tequila. After this initial quartet was met with success, Snapple decided to expand the Element lineup, adding beverages such as Voltage, Turbulence, Gravity, Altitude, and Velocity. Later on, they also came out with a tea line. We knew this drink was on its way out when, in 2005, its original glass bottle was swapped for an aluminum can, without a doubt the inferior packaging. After the switch to aluminum cans, they came up with a new line of Element drinks, Aluminum Energy. This lineup added an energy boost to pre-existing flavors like fire and rain, in addition to creating new flavors like venom and metal. Ha, that is so metal! After sales started to drop, all Snapple Element drinks got the axe. Post Crunchy Stars Cereal Mmm, scrumptious! If you conducted a survey asking people to choose their favorite Muppet Show character, there are very high odds that the resident culinary genius, the Swedish chef, would win by a landslide. His segments could always get a laugh from even the toughest audiences and were enjoyed by viewers of all ages. Thus, it's unsurprising that, in creating a Muppets-themed cereal, this would be the character selected as a mascot. Although we're sure Animal and science duo Bunsen and Beaker gave him a run for his money. The cereal in question was dubbed Crunchy Stars. This, of course, is the proper Swedish translation of the name Crunchy Stars. Well, proper, judging by the Swedish chef's dialect, at least. On the box, the Muppet describes the cereal as cinnamon money money. In the chef's unique dialect, it means cinnamon flavored. Now, you're probably thinking that this crunchy, cinnamon flavored cereal sounds a lot like Cinnamon Toast Crunch. And you would be absolutely correct. In fact, the cereals were a little too similar. By the time Crunchy Stars was released, Cinnamon Toast Crunch was already one of the top-ranking cereals available. How could it compete with that? Spoiler alert, it couldn't. Crunchy Stars was discontinued in 1989, just one year after its release. Stick around, we've got more great videos for you to check out. Just tap that screen. And if you're new to our channel, show us some love. Hit that subscribe button and ring that bell to join our notification squad.